What's happening, beautiful people? And welcome back here to your beginner four week challenge. Week three, day two, we got another awesome session here today to follow up yesterday's work. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All we're gonna need is just like yesterday, a bench or something similar, a kettlebell or a dumbbell. Today I'm working with a kettlebell. I believe mine is 10 kilograms, so about 22 pounds. And then I'm also working with a tube band. This is the one with the handles. And I got it hooked up to a high anchor here, which is about the height of a door frame. If you don't have that particular band, the TheraBands also work quite well. Just make sure you get that thing attached to an overhead frame or an overhead point. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We're gonna ease into things today with a bit of a knee bend. So leaning here forward on the balls of both feet. I have my elbows tucked into the top here, right around the knee crease. And I'm just shifting the weight forward, you know, really leaning into the support of my hands, letting the elbows drive the knees apart here, creating a good amount of space in my hips. I can shift to the right, I can shift to the left. <sighs> Synchronizing the breath, so as I lean into one side, particularly heavy. I can just regulate that air on the way out. Just taking sips of air in between here and during the pauses when I'm shifting out of my stretch. If it feels good, maybe you come up to the flat-footed position and work this deep squat, this malasana pose. You can kind of push up out of your squat a little bit if that feels good. But let's just take another 30 seconds here to explore and be in our bodies, be in our breaths. Let's learn more about where we have space, where we might be a little tight from yesterday's work. I highly recommend um, at an opposite point every day. So for example, if you do these workouts in the morning, maybe in the evening, you go for a 15 or 20 minute walk around your neighborhood. If you do these workouts in the evening, maybe you find 15 or 20 minutes in the morning to go for a walk uh, as just some complimentary movement. So awesome stuff there. Now from here, let's go ahead and work into a kettlebell or a dumbbell halo. So let's show the shoulders a little bit of love. So from a nice rooted stance, squeezing the floor through the bottom of the shoes here or, or through the bottom of your feet. Good grip on the kettlebell here by the horns with the belly facing up. We're gonna bring this guy around the back of the head and then right back through to the front of the body, right back into that starting position. And if you have a dumbbell, in this case, we would just hold either end of the dumbbell and work the exact same pattern. But the idea here is to end up at this position at the end of your movement where the uh, elbows are stacked right above the shoulders and just wanna keep everything really tight to the head. Good rooted stance here, so we're not leaning back and dumping into our lower back. Our core is engaged and we're just creating a little bit of space here in the shoulders. Couple more reps here on each side. Working a nice controlled tempo. Beautiful, good, good, good. We can roll the shoulders there a little bit. That should feel pretty nice. And then let's work a stance, a neutral stance, so a true hip width stance. Kettlebell is gonna be in just the right hand for this particular set, and we're just gonna work some side bends here. So working a little bit of lateral flexion in the spine, a little bit of oblique contraction here on this left side. I'm forcing the air out, emptying out all the air as I work into this contraction, and then sips of air in between my reps. Maintaining a nice rooted stance. So again, still squeezing the floor with the bottom of the feet, through the shoes if you're wearing shoes, or directly to the bottom of the feet if you're barefoot. Let's work a few more here on this side. If you like, if they feel good, you can pick up the pace a little bit and just feel the contraction of those obliques. Beautiful. And let's work on the opposite side here. Synchronizing movement to breath and just mindful, mindful of the muscles that are working here to make this pattern happen. And this starts from the ground up the bottom of the feet, the inner thighs, the calves even, all the muscles of the legs are contracted and engaged. The glutes, my shoulder blades are back and down. A couple more here. 
Beautiful, not too shabby there at all. We can put the kettlebell off to the side for now. And let's go ahead and bring the bench into the picture. And let's set this up here nicely so uh, you get a good angle and you can check it out here. I'm gonna have a seat on the right end of the bench here. And all I'm gonna do is pick this left leg up and over and plant it on the back side of my bench. And then bring it right back to that starting position. All the while, I'm doing my best to keep the shoulder square to the front. So just not opening up a tremendous amount here. Letting the space necessary for this pattern to come from my hips. And I find that forcing the air out as you move and just taking sips of air in between your reps is what's gonna work best here for you. Staying planted and rooted through this front side foot. Let's do one more. Beautiful. And then we'll come over to the opposite side here. Same nice tall posture, shoulder stacked right over the hips. And all I'm gonna do is lift, plant that leg on the opposite side and come right back home. Regulating the air in and out, keeping nice tidy alignment. Get another couple on this side. Three, two, and one. Smooth, 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 smooth. Not too shabby there at all. Now from there, we're actually gonna stay on the bench. We're just gonna work on the end of the bench. So we're gonna show a little up to the neck here. I'm gonna sit on one end of the bench and lay the body flat, bringing the head just off of the bench. Now you can put the feet flat on the floor or bring them up. I prefer to put my feet up here, but all we're gonna do is bring the head very gently into this extended position and then force the air out as you bring the chin to the chest and flex here a little bit. So inhale, hold as you work your way back into this extended position, gently relaxing the head. And then force the air out gently as well as you bring the chin to the chest. Nice and smooth here, just exploring the space and the sensations in the neck. A lot of times we sleep on our side or in funky positions, fetal position. We can create a stiff neck, sitting in a rounded position, looking down into cell phones all day or screens. We'll create a bit of a stiff neck. Motion is lotion, so we're just working a little bit of flexion and extension here. Bend and extend. One more from this particular angle. Very nice, and then we can go ahead and pop on up. And then let's flip this around. Let's work from the belly, and we'll hang the head off of the edge here, and all we're gonna do is bring the chin down, and lift, chin down, and lift on the forced exhale. Now use this opportunity to also engage the glutes and the legs here a little bit. You can point the feet. And we don't necessarily need to crank the head all the way up as high as you can. Just again, exploring, listening to the sensations. Where do we have space? Maximizing on that space. Synchronizing movement to breath. We'll get another five reps here. Five, four, keeping those legs engaged, three, two, and one, nice. Working at a nice control tempo there. Anytime you do anything with the neck, spine, things like that, nice controlled tempo, or anything that we do needs to be at a controlled tempo. So very nice, you can put the bench off to the side for now, and let's go ahead and work into just a very simple forward lunge. So hands are gonna be on the hips. I'm starting off here in a neutral stance. I'm gonna take my breath in, hold as I work into a nice forward lunge, pause here, and then push up out of there with control. And then opposite leg goes forward. 
keeping the shoulders right over the hips, coming to a nice 90 degree position at the bottom of my lunge. Forcing the air out on this deceleration phase. Pause for a second, right? So we can assert yourself over this position, take a breath in, and then force the air out on that second push to that tall position. You can even synchronize the arms, opposite arm to opposite leg. One of the most fundamental patterns right here. Forward lunge, decelerate, distributing the weight evenly through the middle of the bottom of this front foot. And we're strong on the ball of the back foot. A couple more on each side. Smooth, good, good, good. We can roll the shoulders there, shake the legs loose a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and work in with our bands here. So good grip on the handles. I'm gonna work from a half kneeling position today. So a nice strong half kneeling position, similar to the one that we were just in, 90 degrees in both knees. The idea here is gonna be starting with the palms facing down. I'm gonna retract my shoulder blades, pulling the hands to the top of the rib cage. We're gonna pause and come back up with control. Keeping nice alignment with the shoulder stacked right over the hips, three. Forcing the air out on the pull, four. Taking a little sip of air in between my reps during these pauses. Hold it on the way back up. Force it out during the pull. Little sip of air during the pause. Three. Two. Retracting the shoulder blades and then following through with that pull, bringing the hands to the top of the rib cage. Now 10 reps with my right knee down, then I'm gonna work a quick switch here for balance. And I'm gonna work 10 reps with my left knee down, getting a really good contraction of those lower lats. Working at a slow control tempo here as always. Backside leg really engaged. I'm squeezing that left glute. Rooted through the middle of my right foot here. Strong in this half kneeling position. Again, a fundamental position. Two more here. Beautiful, good, good, good. And we can put the bands off to the side there, roll the shoulders a little bit. And then let's come into one of the most underrated patterns, period, is just a push-up, a simple body weight quality push-up. One of my favorite variations is a dead stop push-up. So let's go ahead and bring the body here to a high plank position. I'm gonna take a breath in, hold it on the way down, bring my chest all the way to the floor, lift my hands off the ground slightly, and then put them back on the floor and push through the top of my high plank. So inhale, hold, lift the hands to really maximize the retraction of the shoulder blades, and then smooth follow through with the push all the way to the top. Keeping the hips in line with the shoulders, three, four, five, six, seven, beautiful, eight, nice controlled reps, nine, 10, five more quality reps here. Retract those shoulder blades, lift. Five, making sure those legs are engaged. Four. Three, rooted through the balls of both feet. Two. And one. Nice, not too shabby there at all. Quality variation for a quality pattern. I love that, it really emphasizes the retraction of the shoulder blades. Working at that slow control tempo emphasizes the engagement of the core of the lower body. Quality stuff there. All right, let's wrap this thing up here today with a couple of different posterior chain patterns. So bridge, elevated bridge off of this bench here or something similar. And then we're gonna hold a strong reverse plank immediately after that. So the idea here is to set your body up here 
shoulder blades on the bench, feet out in front of you, hip width apart, toes forward. All we're gonna do, you can put the elbows here for a little more support, drop the hips here a little bit, bringing the body into this flex position, head and neck stay in neutral, and then force the air out as you drive the hips through, come back to that starting position. Inhale, hold, drive through. And again, you can put the elbows on the bench for a little more support, distributing the weight evenly through the bottom of both feet. We're squeezing the floor with the feet. Beautiful. Getting a good contraction of the glutes, the hamstrings at the top of this pattern. Nice and controlled. Let's get five more reps here. Five. Feeling that contraction all the way up through the spinal erectors. Four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful. Now from there, shoulder blades stay exactly the same. We're just gonna kick both legs out long and then bring the hands across the body here. Reverse plank here. We're gonna hold this guy for a solid 40 seconds. We're on the clock. The idea here is to really overextend the hips as much as you can. Engage the glutes, engage the hamstrings. Core is fired up, head stays in neutral so the head's not doing anything crazy. Regulating the breath in and out. And we're just firing up the entire back of the body. The back of the body that in many cases is turned off throughout the course of our day. Whether we're sitting on a computer, or sitting in traffic, or sitting at the ball game. Sitting is the enemy of the human body. So these little patterns help us offset as many of the effects as we can. 20 seconds, guys. Stay with me here. Driving those heels into the earth. Really engaging the glutes, the hamstrings, the paraspinals. 10 seconds. Head stays in neutral. Beautiful. Three. Two, and time. Nice, nice, nice. Very really carefully step up out of that position. A few deep breaths, get you some water. Awesome, awesome work today. Thank you as always for playing along. Eat well, get your sunlight. If you can go on a little mindful walk at the beginning or at the end of your day, it's a great way to complement this program. And I can't wait to get with you guys tomorrow right back here for week three, day three.